one of the rising stars in the WNBA. Awat Kuir is here to talk about her journey and the 2023 Dallas Wings. Locked on women's basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Well, hi there, everyone, and welcome to Lockdown Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Magdal, and I want to thank you for making us your first listen every day, where we talk past, present, future of women's basketball six days a week. Subscribe to us on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, it is not just me. It is the entire team that covers the sport over at the next, the next hoops.com. We have a very special deal right now, 27% off paid subscriptions. You get over a hundred reported pieces every month about the sport. We have somebody in every WNBA market. Uh, the great Ari Graham, of course, uh, down in Dallas, will be covering a really intriguing team. And I, I, I don't mean to uh, use the point of personal privilege, but Awak, you may be the most intriguing figure on one of the most intriguing teams. So I appreciate you joining us today. And I just want to start here. You came to this league as one of the youngest players in the league, and you posted a block percentage north of six in both your first two seasons. Just just a crazy ability to be able to anticipate block shots. I want you to take me through where and how that still developed uh, for you on the defensive end of the court. I think I've always kind of been a defensive player. So I feel like I've always enjoyed like playing good in defense. So I think half of that definitely comes from just myself and being so happy to play defense. But I think like being able to kind of understand the game and learn how everybody plays. And I think that was, that kind of made it easy for me to anticipate like when somebody is going for a layup or, or if somebody's going for a pass. So I think that helped me a lot and that really develop from my first year and second year. So we're going to talk a lot in segment one about your journey to this point. Segment two is going to be focused more on this 2023 season and the years ahead. But just, you know, to give our listeners a sense, uh, you made uh, your family made the journey from Sudan to Finland, which is where you grew up. And you managed to turn yourself into a player who was second overall in the draft. Now, that's a lot of responsibility to put on a 19-year-old player. If we go back and we look at the history of the league, you know, there are not a lot of players, especially, you know, again, I say overseas players. Why does that matter? Because in the W, if you are coming through college, it has to be your 22nd birthday the year you're drafted. If you're coming from overseas, it's 19. And that's that's a very different thing for you, for Liz Cambage, for Emma Miesemann. Take me through what it felt like at age 19 to have that kind of responsibility put on your shoulders and sort of how you navigated that. I think for sure, like at first, I feel like I was very proud of myself, but I can definitely feel the pressure and I feel like I can definitely feel that I was younger than everyone else. And I think I was lucky to have um, Isabel that I played with her overseas and then actually got to play with her here in Dallas too. I think uh, her and like Satu and a lot of my teammates helped me through that. And they was always there like teaching me the little things and always like being able to be that guidance for me. So I think that made it very easy for me. And I think I adjusted very fast, but I think uh, without them, it would have been very hard. So I'm very lucky to be able to have teammates like them. I mean, to do it on the court as well is a challenge, obviously off the court and making sure you have a support system is significant. You know, you are somebody though, who you've been ahead of the game wherever, whatever leads you played in, you know, when you, when you were playing in youth leads in Finland, you know, this has always been a place where you've been able to be a featured performer, where you've been able to stand out. It had to be for the first time in your career, right? 
where you were getting sporadic minutes at age 19, you, you know, in your rookie season, coming off the bench. How do you navigate that? How do you kind of think it through? How do you feel about that at that time? And how did you how did you manage it within your own your own expectations? I think uh, for sure, like it was a new thing for me, like you said, like my youth and before I came to uh, W, I was playing a lot of minutes like I was kind of in that star position. But I feel like I feel like this, like coming into the W and not playing that much, it kind of taught me a lot of things. And I think at first I was like not that comfortable with it. Like I was kind of like, what is going on? Like I thought I would play much more. but. Yeah. Then again, like you see like the players that are in front of you and the vets that are playing in front of you and you kind of start to kind of understand why they're playing more than me. And then you start kind of wanting to compete with them and do better than them. So I think like with for me, I just kind of instead of making it a negative thing, thing I just kind of turn it into a positive thing and be like, OK, like I need to be able to be good as them, like. So I would go very hard in practice and I would try to show like, OK, I can play with them. So it was something that I kind of had to convert into a positive thing. And I think I was able to do that really well. And even though I was competing against the vets, I was still like learning from them. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And, and it, you know, it's interesting. I wonder from afar, I had a certain view of it. And I'm curious for you up close if there was a moment where you really felt like, you know, all right, I have my legs under me and I feel like I belong. For me, from afar, I remember this game you played in August. I went back to look it up. Um, it was against the Mystics and you were in D.C. You played 22 minutes. You put up nine points, five rebounds. You were a critical part of what was a big win and a win that you guys really needed, an A277 win over Elena Deladon and the Washington Mystics. And you played, obviously, this huge role. Does that stand out in your mind? Was there a different moment where it was just like, wow, I really feel like I belong here now in that rookie season? Yeah, for sure. I think I remember the Mystics game very good. And I think it was a moment where I really like felt like I'm ready and I'm like ready to to take a bigger role. Like even I didn't know how much I was going to play playing so I was like you know what uh, all the minutes I get like I'm gonna go as hard as I can mm -hmm. and I felt like I really was ready for it and I think I was able to play a little more so I'm very lucky for that and I think I showed to a lot of people that I really can play and I really do belong because I feel like I've always kind of had that thought in the back of my mind like maybe I don't know how to play in the league because it's so much different from Europe but I think that game really like showed me like no like i really can't play here do you feel as if the way in which the league works and the way in which the european style of play works has really started to come together more and more i just you know from an outsider view as you know somebody covering the league it looks that way you know both because of you know an infusion of international talent but i think also just because of so much more pace and space that we're seeing on the wnba side and i just i just wonder as somebody who who does both whether you see those coming together in a more significant way yeah for sure i think like um for example, now with my team, like we we kind of we run a lot, which is like a, something that we do in Europe all the time, like transition game. And I think that's something like one of the number one things that I feel like is coming to the W to to like we're becoming more like faster and we run the floor more. And like you said, a lot of space. So I think for someone who does play in the both league, I think for sure it's becoming easier and easier for you to adjust to playing in the W and in Europe. And I think that's something that is very good for the European players. So, No doubt. I, listen, I think it's good for the league too. I think, you know, it, it is a more aesthetically pleasing type of play. And we're, and we're going to talk about that, the running, because I know, I know that coach has talked a lot about this and it, it's, I'm, I'm fascinated. All right. We're going to get into that in just a moment in segment two. Just first, want to make sure I tell the good folks at home about eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. 
So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, so running. You guys, the last two years, have been ninth in the lead in pace and 11th in the lead in pace. And I know it's always, it, it was something that, Vicki Johnson talked about wanting to do, but wasn't doing it on a consistent basis. I know Latricia Trammell has a different set of systems in place, but on the offensive and the defensive end, take me through some of the ways where that has already been changing, not just in the uh, preseason game, but what you're seeing in practice every day. Yeah, definitely. Every day we run so much. And I think like even just, starting from the warm up like we always start with running and i think she definitely wants us to just like push the ball and she doesn't really care like who is pushing the ball she just wants us to uh push the ball and keep running and i think that's something i really felt like what, since the first day when i came in when i came back like i felt like she was always like like just run 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 and she was encouraging like even from the beginning maybe we would have some turnovers but she'd be like okay like it's gonna get better like right now we just have to get used to running and running so I think I definitely noticed that and that was like the first thing that I noticed and I just for our listeners at home they need to understand that that you're built for that type of game you know I'm just gonna throw I'm trying I'm trying not to get too nerdy on the program but just nerdy (laughs) enough right last year if you go to synergy and your numbers your overall points per possession was 0.808, which is a solid number. Your points per possession in transition was 1.2 in transition, which means that when you are running, listeners at home, when, um, when, when in transition, you are scoring at a level that is near the top of the WNBA. And so I guess my question for you is, what do you think it is about your game that allows you to excel so much in transition in that way? I think just how kind of I grew up playing basketball. Like, I feel like in Finland, like, we were all about running. Like, you know, you had to be in really good shape to be able to make a team. So it was like everything was about running. So I feel like I've gotten so used to that. And now when I'm, like, older, like, that's something that's always kind of stuck with me and being a part of my game. So I think definitely it comes from there. It's interesting. And, and again, it that transition – defense is going to be so significant too. somebody who's able to block shots is going to matter when other teams are running in return, which of course is part of the game that you guys are trying to put together. Uh, I do though. And and this is another significant thing. You have a clearly defined role. It seems here in 2023, how significant is it to come into camp knowing what your role is going to be. And, you know, take me through kind of what those initial conversations are with LT, you know, with Brandy Poole, with, you know, this staff about the way in which they want you to operate this year within the Dallas Wings scheme. I think the one thing that I kind of noticed from the start is like they definitely wanted me to be able to just do more and be comfortable doing everything. Like I feel like they would encourage me all the time to be like, okay, like if you open, take a shot or like attack the basket or like be aggressive. So that's something that I really felt like a change. Like I I felt like I I was more comfortable and Mm -hmm. I was like, it was okay for me to just be aggressive or take a shot. So I think that's something that was a big thing for me because I feel like when I have the confidence and I have the like, when I'm comfortable, I play way better. Mm-hmm. So I think also that and them always kind of talking to me about what, how they want me to play, how they want me to um, like the thing where they want me to attack and things like that, that really like help me 
have the vision of like them basically telling me like, okay, like this year you can be more aggressive. This year you can like mo be more involved. You, you talk about that and, and a walk, obviously that matters in terms of when you're out on the court, but it seems to me, and, and I'd love for you to speak to this. I don't want to uh, assume, but knowing that you're going to have extended minutes, knowing that the wrong shot isn't going to get you pulled allows you to get rhythm, right? I mean, rhythm, rhythm is so important as I understand it, uh, to being able to play the game, you know, does that feel like something that where, you know, we can't just kind of look at your numbers and say, all right, well, she'll double the minutes, she'll double the numbers. It's more than that. There's a chance to, you know, really build on things from having the chance to be out on the court for an extended period of time. Right. Yeah, I agree. I feel like also like when you're in the, when you're in the court longer, I think other aspects of your talent, kind of comes through and you can see that way better. I feel like there's a lot of things like I feel like I can really pass the ball and I can really play defense. So it's like when you have more minutes, like you're able to show that to people. And I think it's very important to be in rhythm because that's like the best thing for a basketball player, like being in a rhythm, being able to play longer minutes and like contribute way more. Now, you talked about Isabel Harrison being a figure for you. I know, obviously, you are in some ways, you know, at the relative beginning of your career, but you're also now here in year three when it comes to being in Dallas. And there are a lot of players who are new to the area. So how do you kind of balance those things and take me through the way in which you try and perform in a young leadership role um, at that same time and give people the lay of the land, you know, whether it you know, is a Maddie or a Lou or an Abby? Yeah, so basically um, our team have a lot of vets that are kind of very helpful. So mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes maybe I don't have to work as hard because like, they kind of do that job. But I think sure. for sure as, as to like being here in Dallas and knowing the little things about Dallas, I think every time a rookie is asking me things, I'm always like ready to teach them just how like, Izzy taught me so I'm always like with an with open arms like here like if you need to ask anything like if you maybe a little bit scared to ask the vets like you can come ask me and like I think um having that role also comes from overseas too I feel like uh last year I had a bigger role overseas and I was really like um like a mentor to a lot of the young players in my team. We have very young players. So mm -hmm. I think they also carry all of us here too. So. It's interesting though, even, even the vets, right? Like a Natasha Howard, like she's got a decade in this league, you know, and, which is hard for me to imagine to somebody who covered her in college, but she got a decade in this league, but she's also new to Dallas in that way, you know? So have you felt as if in that way, you're able to be a bridge to the vets as well? Yeah, for sure. I feel like I'm always talking to them and being able to just create that relationship with them. And I feel like they give me something and I give them something too. So, In terms of Natasha, there's a lot of overlaps between the way her game operates and the way I think a lot of people project your game to be over time. And I just wonder, you know, was Natasha someone you looked to in terms of her game for the way you wanted to develop even before she got to Dallas? Are there other players who you've patterned yourself after in that way? You know, how do you kind of figure out where you want to get to in terms of the shape of your game? Yeah, for sure. I feel like um, a player in the league that I definitely was looking up to was like Candice Parker. I feel like the way she plays always kind of been what I kind of wanted to do and wanted to become. But also, like, I remember playing against Natasha overseas and uh, she literally was going crazy against me. So I was like, wow, like, she's an amazing player. And I was like, the way she can, like, play physical, like, I didn't expect her to be that physical, but she was very physical. I think that's something that stuck with me. I, I used to think, like, okay, I want to be physical just like her. So I think that's great that I'm playing against her, now playing with her this year. So I can kind of learn from her firsthand. I'm, I'm fascinated. I, I want to see lineups with the two of you. You know, our coach doesn't consult me, but I'm just saying I want to see lineups <laughs> with the two of you playing off of each other uh, because you both have – so many four and five skills that you can work on together. And, and that's really where I, I want to conclude here today. Um, 
you went from a solid scorer at the rim in year one. You made about 50% of your shots, zero to three. You were automatic last year in year two. You were 79.3% uh, from the field from zero to three, which again, like I go back to, uh, you know, you are a, a very young player in this league. You're going up against people who have had more years of weight training, more years to develop, but you are finishing at the rim in an extraordinary way. Now, I've seen you play overseas. I know what you bring, and you are a three-level scorer. When you talk about Candace Parker, listeners at home, that is a logical place to be thinking about growing your game. What is kind of next on the agenda for you? You know, is it – taking the three and bringing it here and making that part of, you know, making yourself a true stretch big? Is it, um, you know, increasing your number of mid-range shots? What do you feel like is sort of next to grab out of the bag of tricks and add to your WNBA repertoire? So basically I feel like um, playing overseas developed a lot of like playing outside the paint, but I feel like something that, I need to get better at is playing inside the paint, like being able to have multiple moves and like maybe not just play that physical, but still have like some moves that I can like get easy, like get easy. So I think I don't want to go away from playing like sometimes back to the basket or like playing cl close to the um, paint. I think overseas I kind of went away from that and I just stayed with like shooting threes or like driving from the three-point line but I want to be able to do both and like develop especially playing back to the basket like I know I'm not as physical as the other posts but I feel like because I might be faster like I can like develop moves where I can like score uh inside like I score outside so yeah I am fascinated to see it uh it's going to be a very interesting year ahead uh, listeners, make sure you are keeping a close eye on a walk and all that she is doing. Ninth in the league, ninth in the league last year in defensive points per possession per synergy, this evolving offensive game. I'll leave you with this. If there's a single number or stat that you are looking at to measure your growth here in 2023, what would that be? Um, I think for sure, like, offensively I think defensively I've always kind of been there but I think offensively I want to be able to get better and look back to it and be like okay like my percentages went up and I, I took more shots and like I was able to score more so yeah cannot wait to see it thank you so much uh, for thank being you. on the show to our listeners thank you for joining us every day the great jackie powell will be hosting tomorrow then we've got the wnba draft show coming up as usual on saturday yes the draft just recently happened no it is not too soon to be talking about 2024 because this is what we do every day until tomorrow i am howard magdal wishing all of you a wonderful thursday welcome to wallet for the win You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball.